Welcome back. I'm your host, KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with marine mammals like seals and sea lions, both of which are common sites off of our coast. In fact, harbor seals get their name because they're often found in harbors, like the one right behind me. In fact, if you look on these logs over here, you can spot a couple little blubbery bodies. People often use the names seal and sea lion interchangeably, but they're actually two completely different animals. But what's the difference? So today, I thought that'd be our topic of our deeper dive. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure to head down to the descriptions for ways that you can help support the channel. Before we get to their differences, let's first talk about what seals and sea lions have in common. Perhaps most importantly, both seals and sea lions are protected by the Marine Mammal Protection Act, which makes it illegal to hunt, kill, capture, or harass any marine mammal, or even attempt to do so. More on this in a moment. Seals and sea lions actually have a lot in common. They are very closely related and belong to the same clade, pinniped. Pinniped is Latin for fin or feather footed. Most pinnipeds have extreme sexual dimorphism, which just means that there are large physical differences between the males and females within the species. The males are significantly larger than the females in all of the species, but in fur seals, the males are about 40% larger. It can be up to five times heavier than a female fur seal. And bull elephant seals are famous and even named for the trunk-like proboscis at the end of their face, which the females actually lack. So that's a little bit on what seals and sea lions have in common. But how can we tell seals apart from sea lions? Let's start with how pinnipeds got their names, their fin and feather feet. Sea lions have big, long front flippers that they can actually rotate underneath them and use them to run on land. Come here, Seals, on the other hand, have short, stubby front flippers. Hey, where's Hermes? Good. Where's Hermes? Good. And their rear flippers are actually fixed behind them. Yeah, I don't think they're fixed. That makes them incredibly awkward belly crawlers on land. It's a method of locomotion that scientists affectionately refer to as galumphing. <laughs> These differences in their flippers also affect how they move in the water. Seals will swim by moving their hind flippers in a side-to-side -side motion, kind of similar to a fish. While sea lions use their big, powerful front flippers to fly through the water. Another way to tell seals and sea lions apart, especially if you're just seeing a little head bobbing out in the ocean, is to look for ears. Now, while both species obviously have ears, true seals like elephant seals or harbor seals do not have external ear flaps. So you wouldn't see an ear poking out the side of their head. Okay. Sea lions, on the other hand, have pronounced ear flaps. Which brings me to fur seals. Notice how they swim using their four flippers. And how they can walk using all four of their long and muscular flippers. That's because fur seals are actually a type of sea lion. Just look at their external ear flaps. 
I don't know who started calling them fur seals because early Europeans actually called them sea bears. In fact, their scientific name actually means bear-like. Sea bear is honestly probably a better name than sea lion. Their closest land relative is in fact a bear. Some sea lions, like the stellar sea lion, even sound like bears. Which brings me to a third difference between seals and sea lions. Seals tend to be pretty quiet. They might occasionally growl or hiss at each other, but mostly they communicate to each other using visual displays like splashing water or slapping their bellies. Sea lions, on the other hand, are noisy. They vocalize constantly. So if you can't tell just by looking, trust your ears. Finally, sea lions are far more social typically than seals, who tend to be pretty solitary. Seals spend most of their time in the water, only really coming onto land to breed or to rest, kind of like the ones behind me. You may even be able to see they're still pretty spaced out. Sea lions, however, will congregate in herds in the thousands in places called rookeries on rocks or beaches or piers. Unfortunately, this close proximity to humans can cause some problems. Two of the animals that I work with, a California sea lion named Cinco and a Pacific Harbor seal named Jessica Seal, were both unfortunately blinded by gunshot wounds. <coughs> Of course, unable to hunt or forage for food, they were deemed non-releasable by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada. While the humans who shot Cinco and Jessica Seal obviously intended to hurt those animals, a lot of humans can still do harm even if they're well-intentioned. Sometimes people will be walking along a beach and see a seal pup, think that it is abandoned, and pick it up as if it needs rescue. When in reality, the mom could be just a few feet offshore foraging for food. If you want to know more about rescue and release of marine mammals and what you can do in these types of situations, click on this link right up here. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that it is illegal to hunt or kill marine mammals like seals or sea lions, or to harass them or even attempt to do so. Some tourists have found this out the hard way, being slapped with thousands of dollars in fines after harassing Hawaiian monk seals. And this is an all too common problem. Hawaiian monk seals are the most endangered pinniped in the world. And while it might seem like harmless fun to take a picture with one on the beach, when the population is only 1,400 individuals, this type of harassment can cause a serious inconvenience to the animal. Because monk seals will actually avoid areas where they're being harassed, even abandoning entire beaches where they were previously breeding and resting. While these cases highlight the threats that humans can pose to both seals and sea lions, the exact opposite is also true. There have been several instances of people being harmed by seals or sea lions. Usually, these people are trying to feed the animals. Quick PSA, never feed wildlife. Seals and sea lions, in addition to having powerful jaws, also have bacteria-filled mouths. Take a look at the teeth of a sea lion. They're black. And a single bite from one of these animals could lead to a condition called seal finger. It causes joint inflammation, swelling of the bone marrow, and was historically treated by amputation. Just trust me, it's a condition you want to avoid. And the easiest way to do so is simply keep your distance. Seals and sea lions are amazing creatures. They're cute, funny, and even beautiful, but they're also wild and potentially dangerous. So admire them from afar, or head to your local zoo or an aquarium, 
or just head on over to the social media of somebody that you trust, like me. And you'll find those links in the descriptions below. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time when we take a deeper dive. There's no sound coming out of your mouth. Sir? It sounds like a squeaky. No. <laughs> Jessica. Target. Target. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> hey.